like to speak about blue diet lasers that constantly push the limits in application. And uh, let's get quickly into the outline because time is up and uh, many people are already um, wondering where they can get a coffee. Um, I would like to speak briefly about LaserLine, our company, about the technology we are using for the blue lasers, uh, what technologies and applications we can do with it, conduction welding, keyhole welding, if we go with blue, if we go with IR still, or do we do something like hybrid where we combine these uh, technologies? I uh, would like to summarize with uh, maybe some, some ideas where to apply which application and technology and have a little bit of an outlook. So let's see where we're getting. Um, LaserLine is a company, I'm pretty sure some of you will know it. Uh, we are a private company, uh, we are managed by the owners. And uh, I mentioned that because it has one big advantage. We do what we want. We don't have to tell a story every three months to our investors. We don't have to look for our financial data, ABIT and something like this. We really look at what's interesting, what's interesting from the market, what's interesting from the customers, what application we would like to, to go ahead with and what possibly we don't. And that makes it uh, very flexible um, in, in responding to customer requests. About 350 people today. We are active uh, globally, more or less. You can see the little uh, map on the top right. And uh, we consider ourselves, hopefully without too much of arrogance, as the technology leader in high power diode lasers. Uh, we do diode lasers in infrared. We do converted diode lasers, which others might call fiber lasers. We do blue diode lasers, which we're talking about today. And from the laser sources with beam deliveries, optics, accessories, process now, and everything, we bring uh, the beam to your workpiece and uh, make happen what you would like to get happened on that. Um, so we are just more than a laser maker. Uh, challenge us with your uh, ideas about applications and such. So blue technology, uh, we heard a talk from, from Richard earlier, and he was talking about uh, chip-based blue diodes, which we consider in the range of five watts. Uh, yes, we are different. We do bar technology, the technology that the brewer doesn't like. Um, it's always good to have different opportunities and ideas in the market. We like the bar-based technology because it uh, simply and more cost-effective gets us to higher powers. So we work on bars in the range of 75 watts at the moment. These bars use the same technology that we have in our infrared diodes. And so that makes it very easy for us. I understand others are starting from scratch into blue diode lasers, but uh, we can use experience of 20 years that we can apply also for the blue diodes. And so having the right uh, heat sinks, having the right optics, um, just the different coatings, and being able of stacking these things, either with five or 10 or 12 or whatever diodes, it's helping us a lot. And, um, we have seen before um, that the individual correction of diodes was one point. We think this is simply too expensive. Uh, if I go with a stack here, as you can see, we have beam transformation optics, and then we have adapting optics. I don't want to go into details. It's not the right timing uh, here available for those. But we only need some lenses to correct all of these uh, emitters and not a single lens for everyone, which, as I said, things uh, we think is too, too cost. Um, uh, it's too high in cost for the one and more cost effective for our solution. So we can couple into fibers like 400 micron with powers in the range of 1500 watts today, which allows us more or less all the applications that we have to go for. Um, it makes it a very versatile tool. So um, yeah, it's, maybe it's early for an outlook on slide number five, but uh, it, it is somehow involved here uh, having a certain outlook um, and what happened. So we have been working on blue lasers for a while, and we launched first systems in 2018 with a kilowatt. Uh, we got ahead with uh, 1500 watts last year, and we just launched the two kilowatt laser this year. And as you can see from this big gray uh, arrow, we are going forward. Uh, next year is the world of photonics in uh, Munich. Hopefully it can, can happen and we can see it and um, visit each other and talk. But there we will be having more power, and this is indicated by this big gray arrow. We are talking about maybe three or plus um, uh, kilowatts for blue to enable more applications than what we have already seen today. Um, heat conduction welding with the blue laser is obviously a very interesting thing. We have seen a video from Richard before, as uh, I have understood videos is a little bit tricky um, here in this webcast. I decided not to use videos and uh, only use some still pictures from these videos. But you can see here on these heat conduction welds, uh, different speeds and power levels. They're very, very smooth. There is no spatters. There is absolute spatter-free. 
So especially the left side picture, 50 meters per minute, uh, two times 0.3 millimeter materials, you can weld fully through at uh, this speed without having any spatters that are coming up. And this makes the blue technology very interesting. Thin materials in copper materials, uh, thin sheets in uh, high reflective materials are simply impossible to weld with infrared technology. You're making holes, uh, you're uh, not able to weld them at all. And so this is the point where the blue laser comes in. And we have tested many different setups and things. And uh, you see on the upper uh, line, many um, mechanical setups, different surfaces that we have been welding. In the middle, you saw, I see different uh, materials, dissimilar materials uh, like copper steel and copper aluminum. On the right-hand side, many, many foils that have been welded together. And on the lower left, even some laser cladding where we have been doing copper powder onto um, either nickel steel or even copper powder onto copper. So the blue laser allows these things. And what's important for us is that you be in some sort of a heat conduction weld um, to avoid spatters. And then you can get absolutely spatter free applications. Another example here, it's uh, 10 foils of 25 microns um, onto a bus bar. Again, in the middle, you see a um, picture, still picture from a video. It was hard to, to bring the videos in, but it's a spatter-free application, which you also can see from the top views on the weld beads. The uh, laser, the blue laser, is the tool for having a robust process. Important if you have many of these foils welded together, that you have no air in between. They must be really pressed together. They must be uh, nice and energetic. Otherwise, even the blue laser cannot get you a certain result. So on another uh, application here, we were working with um, nickel-coated nickel copper onto aluminum. This is uh, the terminal for um, pouch cells and batteries. And the blue laser has a very interesting feature. Depending on power and speed, or let's say even power density and speed, we can control if we just weld the two materials or if we even have enough power to mix the materials and have a real mechanical bonding between the two parts, depending on what the customer wants. This is helping us a lot. Uh, to bring these technologies forward um, depending on a customer's request because we are not just simply able to weld them but also to have different joining technologies joined uh, in, in one process. Yeah, Even this, this mechanical joint is very interesting for many, many people. Um, another very interesting thing on the blue lasers is the gap bridging capabilities. And uh, here is another point where possibly we from LaserLine are not fully agreeing to the position of Nuburu. The um, energy density is an important point, but this is not necessarily defined by the BPP. We don't think that the best BPP is going to be the winner because you will not have the chance of doing gap bridging. And the second thing is, if we are talking about energies that are uh, running through these parts, so currents, um, we don't want to have higher resistance. So we need a certain cross-section. And only if we have a certain cross-section, and typically it's in the range of 120% of the material thickness, we have a chance to not increase the resistance in the electrical circuit. So we need a certain spot size to be able to create this cross-section and to be able to do gap bridging. So you see here gap bridging of uh, 0.5 millimeter copper material with a gap of 0.2, 0.3. And uh, let's go through this as well with the gap of 0.5. And um, honestly, well, melting material, welding material is such a big gap, which is 100% of the actual uh, material thickness, is something I have not seen before. And this is very, very interesting for many customers because um, getting the small and tiny parts into the perfect setup is difficult. Many, many foils and the air in between is an issue. But a setup like you can see here, an overlap joint and not necessarily having a perfect jigging or a perfect uh, fixing of the parts is definitely possible with a blue laser if your spot size is big enough and correspondingly to the bigger spot size, your power is high enough. So what happens if we do blue welding? Yeah, um, here is an example. Only adding 200 watts can already double the velocity if we are in the heat conduction mode. And that you can see here in the power levels 400, 600 up to 1100 watts, we are clearly heat conduction mode. The penetration is not very high. 
Um, this is a spot size of 0.6 millimeters. But if I move ahead and I add a little bit more energy and power, I can start to evaporate the surface. Still, I can smoothly increase the penetration depth and control the process very, very nicely. Uh, but if I go to more power and energy density, I can open up a keyhole. I can go uh, into the situation as a deep penetration weld whatever deep means, because the heat conduction of copper still is making it very, very difficult to get power into the depth. So here we have had a one millimeter sheet and it was welded through in the end about, about 1500 watts. And so we can go from absolutely spatter free heat conduction weld into low spatter, almost no spatter deeper welds that depends on what the customer is requesting. Yeah, again, it's not necessarily on the beam parameter product. Uh, we think it's more the power. Of course, we can go into keyhole welding, something that I mentioned uh, just before. So here we have from the left 400 versus 600 versus 1000 watts. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the marking was lost uh, when uploading the, the files. But on the right hand side, you see a top inside view of a one kilowatt weld, six meters per minute, and you can clearly see the keyhole. Only we have to say, Using a blue laser and a keyhole process, it's not necessarily spatter free. We have to be honest, it's very, very low spatter. You can find setups where there is no spatter, but it cannot be guaranteed that this is a spatter free welding. So blue and keyhole is again something which has to be considered. We have seen before from the presentations from Richard and also from Christoph that um, Spattering is a big issue on, on um, welding of copper. So if you have spatters anyway, possibly infrared can be the better solution. Still, infrared lasers are not dead. Don't forget that. So um, here is an example where we have applied several technologies um, of welding. It's a cylindrical cell has a positive pole on the top and the two negative poles on the shoulder. And the plus pole on the top is heat conduction welded. You see very nice bonding between the copper and the nickel coated stainless steel. If we go to the shoulder on the right, the copper is sitting on top of the shoulder and we have to weld through the copper to join it with the stainless steel. So this is a keyhole weld where we uh, made sure that we go into the stainless steel and get the bonding. And for this, uh, the next weld, which is on the left shoulder, it is not a keyhole weld because the materials are just touching. So we go some sort of the fillet and we need a very, very good gap bridging capability. And so we do this again as a heat conduction weld. It's one laser doing all these three processes in one setup, which I think makes it very, very interesting. So let's um, go to the next one here. I mentioned infrared. So if we want to go into welding depth of, uh, let's say, four millimeters, three millimeters, or these two examples down here with two millimeters, infrared is possibly still the best solution. Yeah, we can go ahead with that all the time. Yes, it is spattering. If you apply high speeds at high energy densities, still copper can be welded by infrared. If you have very tiny parts, if you have a complex structure or weld seam, possibly the speed is an issue, you can't get it to, to the full speed, then you might run into issues. But still, there is a good chance to weld copper with infrared. And we do this every day in our application lab as well. Another point to join the advantages of infrared for the depth and blue for the very smooth welding pool is what we call the hybrid welding here. So I can have a red beam uh, focused or infrared beam th focused through this optics. I can have a blue beam for this one individually, or I can combine them here in the setup and have an overlap of these two spots. So just one quick example here for blue and red in combination. You see one plus one, one plus two, or one plus five, and the welding depths can easily be here exceeding two up to three millimeters. Um, and you have a very smooth welding again. You have no porosity. We are avoiding any, any voids and, and problems here. This is smooth uh, weld bead from the top. And again, very important, we get a wide welding. So if we have thicker materials, we want to have a better a penetration. And we just have a needle wide welding to join these parts together. The current that has to flow over these parts is finding a high resistance. The parts are getting hot and they are failing. So you need to have a certain cross section to be able to transport the current through these parts that you're welding. 
Another combination, um, just to make my point between infrared and hybrid, here on the top you see a 3 kilowatt infrared weld, 300 micron spot. And you see a very instable weld pool on the top, a weld beam. Um, and what you also can see is on the two cross sections, the welding depth varies a lot. We have between 1.4 and 900 microns going up and down because we have spattering, we have holes, and again, from the stills uh, that I took from the videos, you can see components flying out of this one. Um, so if we compare this with hybrid, I get all more or less the same depth, which is much more stable. And uh, if I look into the videos, I couldn't see any spatters on these videos. We couldn't find spatters on the part. Um, so if you need to go into the depth, hybrid is possibly a better solution than infrared, unless spatters doesn't play any role for you in the whole setup. So as time is short, I would like to, to give a rough advice in terms of copper welding. You need to have a big enough spot size to realize a cross section to transport the current that is running over the parts. You need a big enough spot size to have a gap bridging. And if no spattering is important for you, use a blue laser only. We need a certain power of blue to achieve speed. It's too much here to discuss scientific results that have been revealed between different partners we have been working with, but if we have a higher speed, we can overcome conduction, so losing the energy into the material and get more into the convection, into the welding itself, into the process. That creates a higher efficiency. So power is possibly more important than just beam quality and energy density. We can still recommend for some applications infrared. We can still recommend hybrid for some application. It depends on your penetration you want to do. Everything below one millimeter, I would go with blue only. One to four, I would consider IR hybrid depending on what's the setup, if I can allow some spatters or if I must be really, really low on spatters. And um, Richard, uh, on one point, I don't know if you're still in the call, but I have to really go against what you said. Um, you don't have the only blue laser that can use a scanner. We have been delivering scanners to customers already. Yes, maybe it's not in the public, but our lasers obviously can use scanners as well. This is not a big issue. Key takeaways, LaserLine is a global market leader for high power diode lasers. We make infrared diode lasers, we make converted diode lasers or fiber lasers, as others might say. We do blue diode lasers. Um, we have a broad application know-how for all of these different lasers, and we have application labs on three different continents. So challenge us with your inquiries. Consider the heat conduction welding in blue. Um, it requires some power rather than beam quality, um, as I explained before. Um, keyhole welding possibly brings, brings back spatters even in blue. So it might be an option to go with infrared. Hybrid welding for copper is always considered the best option if you need a certain penetration and needs very low spattering, um, trying to get no spattering. Constantly working on new applications here at LaserLine, new power levels, and of course we also work on the BPPs. It's not uh, totally unimportant, but maybe not the, the most important point. And uh, we are providing laser solutions, not only the sources, keep that in mind. So thanks for watching. Contact us for more information so if there is anything requested from your side. And uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to be here. And Matt, back to you.